thanks very much, John, and uh, thank you all for being here. I, you said it was like driving in an aquarium. I, I thought it sort of felt like it was, you know, when you go uh, snorkeling or scuba diving and your, your mask fills up with water? That's what it felt like uh, to me. So, um, but it was, it was a terrific trip, and, and thank you to Catherine and uh, all the folks at the Army for uh, having us down there. Um, and I think it does sort of reiterate uh, what the opportunity and promise uh, and, uh, and importance of the, the work that you all are going to do here um, today, the uh, opportunity to um, really make a difference uh, in the way the federal government operates, uh, save money for taxpayers, uh, and help the environment, all, all while helping ensure that agencies can uh, can fulfill their very important missions. And, you know, we have a great group of people here who are assembled um, representing the, the federal government, state and local government, businesses, utilities, NGOs. And I think uh, also um, to highlight the importance of this subject and of this dialogue, we're very grateful to have uh, three members of Congress join us in a little bit, uh, and uh, and I th and I think that shows the um, I think the general view here that uh, energy performance contracting is a very important tool for building a cleaner and more secure and more energy efficient future. So this has been a big priority of the president since day one, and as part of the uh, administration's all of the above approach to energy, we've really taken some very historic action to curb pollution in our communities, to reduce our dependence on foreign oil, and invest in the clean energy jobs of the future. You know, domestic oil and gas production has increased every year uh, that the president has been in office, and our dependence on foreign oil has decreased every year. And, you know, as we look to how we can ensure that we control our own energy future for our economy, for our security, and for our environment, we know we need to invest in 21st century clean energy. Now, with, with the help of some of the investments we've already made in clean energy, we've already met the goal that the President laid out in 2008, which was to double renewable energy generation in this country. And the President has laid out another goal for us to, to take advantage of this progress and to continue it, and that's to once again uh, double generation from wind, solar, and geothermal sources by 2020. And as we continue to make these very important strides in our energy future, I think it's important to recognize that, I, as I know you all know, that the cleanest and cheapest form of energy is the one that we don't use at all. And our, our homes, our businesses, our factories account for more than 70% of the energy we consume as a nation, and we certainly can take uh, common sense steps to use that energy more efficiently. Now, energy efficiency, I think uh, you would all agree, is a very good deal uh, for our families, for our communities, businesses, and government. It helps with our competitiveness. It, lowers our utility bills, it frees up capital for businesses, it reduces pollution um, and creates new jobs and all at a relatively low cost. So in this year's State of the Union, the President set an ambitious goal to cut our country's energy waste in half and double our energy productivity by 2030. And there's not a one-size-fits-all solution. And so we have to support a range of programs and a range of tools to help achieve that goal and to drive energy efficiency uh, across our economy and across the country. And the President's uh, 2014 budget request includes a request for $200 million for a new race to the top for energy efficiency and grid modernization that's modeled on the very successful race to the top for education. Now this program would award grants to states and tribal governments, to local governments that have public power utilities, and to electric cooperatives who take innovative steps to cut energy waste and to modernize our electric grid. 
Now, beyond this, we've put um, forth uh, dozens of new or updated efficiency standards for appliances that will save consumers nearly $400 billion on their utility bills through the year 2030. And last summer, we finalized a groundbreaking fuel economy standards that will double the distance that our cars will go on a gallon of gas by 2025. And these standards will save Americans literally trillions of dollars at the gas pump, an average of more than $8,000 per vehicle. And you know, we know that consumers themselves can play a very important role in saving energy. And so the administration launched the Green Button Initiative to promote the uh, common sense idea that households should be able to access their own energy use information from their utilities in an easy and secure format. With access to this kind of data, consumers can make use of a, a growing set of software tools and other things that will help them better manage their energy use and strengthen their bills. And as of today, 16 million families and businesses have access to Green Button, and very soon another 20 million will have access uh, to this Green Button data. Now, to tackle energy efficiency on the commercial building side, the President launched the Better Buildings Challenge in 2011 with the goal, the national goal, of reducing energy use in commercial buildings by 20 percent by 2020. And as part of the challenge, we have more than 100 CEOs, mayors, and other leaders who've committed to more than $2 billion uh, retrofits for commercial building space across the country. And based on the results from the first year of the challenge, um, if all U.S. commercial and industrial buildings improved at the same rate as the Better Buildings Challenge partners, the savings would eventually total more than $80 billion a year. Now, just like uh, these uh, participants in, in the Better Buildings Challenge and many other businesses and governments um, across the country, federal agencies are finding that reducing uh, waste and saving energy makes, makes good business sense. And for many projects, we have to look at ways that we can leverage resources and look at alternative financing opportunities. And, and certainly one of the very promising opportunities is the, one, uh, is the one that we're talking about today, and that's performance contracting. So as part of uh, the Better Buildings Challenge, the President uh, made the commitment for uh, two, two billion dollars to upgrade federal buildings with energy savings performance contracts. Now, across the government, agencies are making much-needed energy upgrades at little or no upfront cost to taxpayers. And this is possible because performance contracting allows agencies to pay for these upgrades over time with the money that they save through reduced utility bills. So this, um, this financing model um, cuts costs, it reduces waste and pollution, and it supports jobs. In, in the construction sectors, and it gives the federal government the ability to stretch the taxpayer dollar further uh, so that we can uh, do what we need to do to uh, focus on the mission uh, of each agency and serve the American people. And there's been a, just a tremendous uh, amount of work and cooperation uh, and working relationships between the federal agencies and the private sector, and we are making significant progress towards the President's $2 billion commitments. Through the, all of these efforts, uh, which many of you have been involved in, agencies have roughly tripled, in dollar terms, the rate of performance contracts awarded. Now, we know that the federal government is not the only one taking advantage of these kinds of financing tools. And across the country, uh, cities and states, nonprofits and entrepreneurs uh, people who are represented in this room are, are helping to lead the way, and we want to do uh, everything that we can to support you. So today is about uh, highlighting your success, about sharing best practices and lessons learned, and uh, identifying the ways that we can continue to work together to cut energy waste and to save money. So uh, I want 
to thank you again for coming, for uh, sharing your wisdom uh, in participating in these discussions, and I look forward to working with all of you to build a healthy and prosperous and secure future for our country. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. As Nancy remarked, the, the President has challenged us to do the federal agencies to enter into $2 billion worth of energy performance contracts, energy service, uh, ESPCs, energy service performance contracts, and UESCs as well. So quickly, first things, obviously, what is a, an energy performance contract? And simply put, the performance contracts allow the federal agencies to accomplish our energy savings with minimal upfront costs to the taxpayer, and really without upfront capital costs uh, to the federal government. So in consultation between the federal agencies, the, the ESCOs and the utilities, they work with the federal facilities. They um, help construct projects that meet the agency's needs, and they guarantee cost savings uh, that, that really sort of generate over, over time. And these are not new tools. These are tools that many of you in the audience know we've been using for 20 years. And a recent Oak Ridge National Lab study pr shows that the actual cost savings to the government uh, for ESPCs are between 175% to 197% of the guarantee savings. And I think that's one of the reasons we're seeing so much support for these projects, both obviously here at the White House across agencies, but also down the Pennsylvania Avenue on Capitol Hill. So in February 2012, as part of the Better Buildings Challenge, the President gave us this $2 billion challenge, and now we're about halfway to the goal, over halfway to the goal. So where are we? I think people are sort of interested in what the update is. Um, but before we get into that, I want to talk for a second about how we track these. I work monthly with the senior sustainability officers at the agencies, many who are in the room today, to track where they are towards the goals, and also to ensure they're moving quality projects through the pipeline. And as of June 15th, more than $576 million in contracts have been awarded, and there's nearly $1.7 billion left in the pipeline that will take us beyond the $2 billion challenge. So that's over 300 projects that are identified, 65 that have been awarded. Um, and it's key that when we're working with the energy savers co companies and the utilities that they've been selected in the contracting process to move forward on these contracts. We have some really key partners in getting this done. Department of Energy, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, my colleagues at the Office of Management and Budget here at the White House, and my folks, my team at, at the Council on Environmental Quality. So I want to take a second to thank them for their hard work in this space and their counterparts of the agencies that are helping to move this ball forward have been critical in keeping the, moment, the momentum going. And just to give you a sense, Nancy mentioned it briefly, but for us, this is a 300% increase in work in this space uh, from any previous year. So any private sector company, I'll challenge you to sort of handle a 300% increase in contracts annually without getting additional revenue to build up your teams to deal with it. So it is definitely a challenge, and it's taken a strong partnership between the executive branch and the legislative branch and the private sector to really focus and continue the momentum to move these forward, which is one of the reasons we're doing this event today. So in all of our energy efficiency tools, including performance contracts, collaboration is key. So one of the reasons we wanted to bring this event together today is because we also think that we're not, obviously we know we're not the only ones using these. There's folks that it may not be exactly the same, but folks in the, the local and state governments, hospitals, universities, the housing authorities are also using these energy performance contracts. And we know that working in collaboration is key to finding the solutions that we need. And also working to ensure we have quality projects. So one initiative that we're moving forward with uh, here at the White House is we're working with our partners in the Office of Management and Budget in an office called the Office of Federal Procurement Policy. And they have a, a strategic sourcing initiative that works to lead to smarter procurement. So we're working with that team to try to develop a specific focus on performance contracts so that we can dedicate resources to shortening the time to execution gap to, for moving these awards forward, to increase process standardization, to provide increased training to contracts, staff, and 
tracking the lower cost ECMs and financing and contracting opportunities. But we're also having a real robust dialogue with agencies, industries, and, and key stakeholders. And I know many of them are here today, so folks like the National Association of Manufacturers, the Chamber of Commerce, Edison Electric Institute, and others have been really critical at helping us have a dialogue about how we improve in the path we're going. Many are here today, so thank you for your support. And many actually sent a letter to the president just last week, um, both showing their support and, and calling for, for uh, more effort moving forward. And I wanted to thank you for that. We received your letter, and it's uh, much appreciated. And last but not least, we're definitely engaging the state and local governments in these tools. And we're looking to find key areas that we can share lessons learned. And over the course of the summer, we'll be having a series of dialogues with them to find ways that we can maybe share some practices in terms of the processes, share some terminology maybe in terms of contracts, because we want to focus on breaking down challenges and really fostering solutions and innovation. And so over the last several months as this challenge was stood up, I had the opportunity to go out to agencies and meet with the senior sustainability officers as we talk through their pipelines. And one of the most interesting messages I've heard uh, was actually from folks at the Department of Transportation who talked about the way that they have stood up their contracting officers, they've trained their lawyers, they initially put a pipeline forward for opportunities, but now that these folks understand these authorities, which are sort of unique and complicated authorities to understand, they think they're at the tip of the iceberg for more potential. We recognize this. We also recognize there's a tremendous amount of pressure on a very small community of people within the federal government to ensure we can execute these projects. Um, th but the $2 billion challenge was intended to get performance contracting moving forward, to, inc inc to increase the process so it's moving faster and more efficiently, but also ensuring quality projects. So as they're ramping up imp implementation, improving their processes, and they're starting to execute more and more of these projects, the momentum is growing. And while we're working to address the current pipeline, we're also looking to identify future opportunities. So regardless, we are absolutely committed to this initiative. And we wanted to thank you all for being here today and the opportunities I think you're going to hear from both the federal sector, the state, local, and others, uh, and obviously the private sector as well.